Alright, hey, uh, welcome again to Smansky Arts. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is a statue repair um, project. Um, sorry, it's not a pop culture item, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, nice lady gave me this uh, statue to repair. Okay, basically, obviously, she's missing an arm. Um, and she's missing a piece of the base here. I don't know if you can see that right there. And then lastly, there's um, some fingertips she's missing. Alright? So that's that. With that being all said, let's get cracking. All right, cool. All right, first thing I had to do was try and look for this uh, arm online somewhere. Couldn't quite find it anywhere, um, but luckily um, I found the actual statue itself. Someone had painted it, um, so now I kind of know what the uh, arm looks like. Originally, I was just going to do a um, arm with some flowers in it or something because she's kind of got like a sunflower in her um, hat but um, anyways now that I've got that I know what I'm doing but anyhow enough of that um, first thing we do is we're gonna start doing some drilling alright I'm gonna start off with a small drill bit and then um, and then I'll make it a little bit larger Man, that is hard <sighs> resin. Anyways, so anyways, I'm going to start with a small drill bit and then work my way up to a bigger drill bit because I'm going to have to fit something in there that's um, thicker than a tiny small um, wire system. Usually what I do when I'm fixing these things is I, um, I'll take a wire as an armature just to give it some an added um, anchoring point, anchoring system. All right. Cool. All right, a little side information. The reason why I started off with a small drill bit and worked my way up is sometimes if you're not familiar with the um, the material you're using and you just go ahead and take your drill bit and you start um, pressing it up against um, a smooth surface, sometimes it'll, it'll start sliding around. So what I like to do is start off with a small, tiny little hole and then just kind of like slowly work it larger and larger. Um, that way I you know obviously I prevent myself from like making like slip ups and stuff like that like I said it can it can have a tendency to slip around sometimes if um you know like I said if you're not quite familiar with the material you're you're working with which in this case I'm not so anyways that's that now that we have our um, hole drilled we can start um, putting the armature together all right cool. okay I'm starting to make the pail um, I have to make the round part which is a pain in the neck um, I, I need to make it as small as possible, but anyways, trying to, to to correct these little curves and make them straight and flat. I'm basically in the kitchen, giving it a little giving it a little tap in order to uh, s straighten those out as much as possible. So it's kind of getting there. Anyways, whatever, just a little s small little thing. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go finish it. All right, folks, now that I've got that all hammered out and um, looking fine, I um, um, finished off the armature part for the arm, which is right here. goes down to the pail. Okay. Give you a picture if you don't remember what it looked like. Right here. You can see if I put it on top, you can kind of tell. This right here, obviously, is the opening part this whoops this piece obviously is the handle and this is the top handle anyhow that's that um this this menagerie of gunk right here is actually gorilla glue and some super glue i couldn't do the twisty like up here in these sections because it would have been too um it would it have been too um too big i wouldn't be able to like get the um thin thin pale look as you can see, the opening of the pail is thin. If I had it all wrapped around, it, it, I wouldn't be able to make it correct. All right, cool. That's that. Let's go up to the piece itself. And simply what happens is he fits right up in there, like so. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, so now I can just start adding the clay to it, and we'll be on our road or on the road to the next step. Alright, cool. Alright, 
I'm going to be using uh, Super Sculpey beige style ceramic. Basically like a soft clay. If you've seen my other videos, you know what I'm what I'm doing. So basically all I do is I just start adding adding the clay to it. Okay. And then we'll basically just kind of shape it like so. And then you just kind of just kind of keep going. But anyways, let me put that back in there. Okay. All right. Then we just slowly work our way down. All right? Cool. All right. Like I said, just kind of slowly working it. It's going to look pretty janky at first, but like most of my projects, you notice that I'll start out looking like garbage and then it kind of slowly works itself out. All right. Cool. All right. My arm's coming along. Um, this is a little bit of what it entails. Just kind of smoothing things out. Got to make sure you have the musculature right, even though this is just a simple, um, looks kind of like a Norman Rockwell kind of uh, sculpture or painting in a sculpture style or whatever, medium. But the littlest thing you've got to get, make sure you get right. And if I don't get it quite right, I can go over and sand the spots that aren't quite as smooth as I need them to be. After I bake it for about, you know, this will probably be about 15, 20 minutes, about 275. Um, as you can see how it's like, it's, it's not quite, you know, smooth like, you know, like you get all these little like imperfection parts or these little bumps and stuff. You have to always kind of smooth those out. Sometimes I can use my my hands, my fingers to smooth out rough spots. Like you see that little bump right there. So we want to fix that kind of thing. But um, that's that. And there's the back side. All the stuff that I can't go with the tool, I can use my fingers to get right. All right. Cool. But looks like the hand's coming along all right. Let's put her up here and see what, see about that. There we go. So, as you can see, she's coming along with the hand. All right, cool. Her arm, I should say. My bad. All right, going moving along here. Uh, so far, I've got the arm looking pretty close to how I need it to be. So I'm going to start working on the uh, working on the pale part All right down here. So. Excuse me, and just like the arm, I just start adding clay slowly to the um, armature that I made. Alright. So, just like so. And then we go all the way around. So on and so forth. So. Alright, now in order to make the, um, the pale hollow, I had to make this uh, little piece here. Um, it's basically um, foil wrapped with some um, duct tape. That way, I can go around the um, I can go around the piece with the clay without um, um, having it a solid piece. All right, cool. All right, next step. Um, now that I've got the um, arm as close to how I want it to be, um, I'm going to bake it, which I just did about a half hour ago. Um, so that I have a nice hardened piece that I can actually start um, sanding to get some of those imperfections um, in the arm that I couldn't quite get in sculpting it because I couldn't quite see because my lighting isn't that great and so on and so forth. So I'm basically just smoothing out the um, divots and um, rough spots, etc., etc. Um, and now that I've gotten a hard base for the bucket, this eventually I'll just pull this out. Um, eventually, I use some pliers or something. But anyways, now that I've got the a hardened um, piece for the bucket, I can actually start sculpting around this. Start doing this handle piece, and then the little you know um, uh, pipe part where the water comes out when you tip it over. And then we'll do the bottom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so cool. All right, now I'm just gonna start 
adding some clay to the bucket now that I have a nice hardened base you just kind of smooth this stuff out like so and then you just work your way around the bucket like so anyways so that's that um, work on this for a little bit and then I'll come back and we'll show you show you where we're at all right cool all right now we got the bucket basically shaped let's just say basically uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work on this little um, this little ridge piece here that goes around the bucket so basically all, you, all I did was you've seen me do this probably a million times in my other videos just rolled out a little piece and then you just kinda go all the way around her like so I probably should put the crease part in the back but whatever alright we'll cut that with the finger okay oops yeah I probably screwed that up anyways and we'll just kinda flatten it for the first thing here just flatten it like so whoops the heck ridiculous anyways I'll just connect that way it sticks so we can work it with the uh, my master tool alright and where is my master tool uh, oh here she is alright so we'll just kinda just slowly go like that Give you a little close up on that. You just kind of like smooth it down. And then the top half is probably not going to be like that. I'm probably just going to make it um, cut into it. All right. Groovy. Let's fix that crease. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, anyways, I'll do this all the way around and we'll be good to go to work on the next part, which is probably either the opening part, spigot, or the handle part. All right. Cool. All right, skipping ahead a little bit, I did the um, nozzle part, or whatever you want to call this part, and then um, I added this piece here so I could do the handle part. Um, <clears throat> and now I'll just start doing the this stuff here, and we'll be uh, pretty close to good to go. All right, I did a little bit, a little minor sanding. Um, get these things right. But it'll probably take another baking, and then I'll start really fine tuning it, and then um, and then we'll be good to go. Right? Cool. So, anyways, <laughs> all right. Um, basically, got her for the most part um, fixed up right. I'm gonna have to fix some of these like imperfections, like they're not. It's not that smooth. Um, since there's only so much I can do with um, sandpaper, which works pretty good, I can't really get in inside too well so I'm just going to use a Dremel drill to kind of go in inside this to smooth it out a bit um, so there we go that'll help round it out alright then I'll come back and we'll be pretty good to go and then I'll probably have to do that with the inside as well just uh, stick it in there and shave some of that away all right cool all right now moving along we're gonna try and do this correct this base piece um, I could simply do something like this and then glue it into place but um, I kind of need a piece that I can take on and off so what I'm gonna do is I made a little um, I wouldn't call it an armature but anyways and then we're going to take a drill, and we're just going to drill into the side there. I'm going to make some marks here. Whoops. I'm going to make some marks here where I want to drill. Okay. And then, excuse me, I'll just fit inside there, and we'll be good to go. Man, am I... I think I fixed that blurry part. Great. Awesome. I had a blurry part over here on the, on the one side. Now I, I fixed it. It must have been the lens. Great. Awesome. All right, cool. I'm gonna get my drill. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it from 
above because I don't want to slip and I think this might be too big of a drill bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to do a smaller drill bit. All right, hold on. All right, that's a little better. All right. Yeah. That's such a pain in the neck. Whoops. Whoops. All right, move to the other one. All right, let's see if this fits in there. All right, cool, groovy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little deeper in now that I know that I've got him in the right spot, and then we'll start adding the clay and we'll be good to go. Actually, it turns out all I really need to do is make a loop. I didn't have to go through all this all rigmarole crap. All right, so cool, we're just gonna start adding some of this clay onto here. And then when I need to, I can just like pull that off and then it'll come right off. All right, all right let me cool. show you kind of what I'm doing here. Um, basically now this piece can be put on and off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and bake this, make this hard. And then from there, I can start adding some of the little detailing on the grass and rocks and stuff like that. But as you can see, it fits right on there, and the little things are fitting the holes. All right, cool. All right, hey, uh, if you're wondering why you're seeing me right now, it's basically because I accidentally and inadvertently erased several clips in the painting process of the project. Um, I do have one clip um, I can show you, and then after that, I'll just have to like. Um, spin the camera around and explain the rest of it. Um, it's not that terribly interesting, but there are some things that I should explain. Not that you're that that interested, but anyways, um, let me show you the piece, how she came out finally, or at last, or um, how she turned out. Came out pretty good. Fairly pleased with it. Um, anyways, that's that. Um, that's the way life goes sometimes. I thought I had the clips downloaded onto the computer and I went ahead and erased them off the camcorder and went to go find them to put them in the video and psh, they're gone. So I must have, um, yeah, major boo boo. But anyways, um, with that being said, let me just go ahead and show you that one clip and then um, explain a little bit of the other stuff in another clip or two. All right. Okay. All right. That's the um, in order to blend this properly where it'll match up, as you can tell, this is a solid color and this is kind of speckled. What I did was I, I um, added a darker element to this, this color here and then I'm going to like go over it very gently with a lighter colored cream color like this here. Um, that hopefully that'll add, um, it to look, um, more correct. All right. So basically I just dip it into the, the lighter, the lighter, um, lighter paint and I just kind of dab it on an index card and then basically just lightly going to go over it like so. And that'll give it that, that textured look that you see, you see it's already starting to kind of blend better. So that's looking pretty, pretty good. Oops, go a little bit over a little bit here. Okay, just as in the base has uh, multiple layers or multiple colors, so too does the uh, bucket and the arm, okay? Um, I don't know if you can really tell by the camcorder or not, but there are actual darker toned colors in the grooves throughout the uh, statue. Um, so if I just went ahead and painted um, the, the pail and the arm just a cream color and just left it like that, it would, it would completely and totally, utterly stand out and it wouldn't blend in with the rest of the piece. So basically what you do is you just, um, I usually, I pretty much usually use three different shades. As you can tell, there's a, a light one, a darker one, and then a darker still, etc. cetera. Um, basically all you do is you just do some blending. Um, you'll take your um, paintbrush into like, let's just say um, um, the, the cream, the lightest cream color, you just do that with the whole, the whole, the whole pail, the whole, the whole arm, everything. And then after you have that base coat, you go over the edges with like a darker tone. 
color and then you just dip it into like the lighter color and then you just kind of blend it and that'll give that that dimension of um, shadowing and stuff like that okay so like I said if I didn't do that it would it wouldn't it wouldn't blend in with the rest of the piece okay I think that's all I really need to say in the painting process now let's move on to some um, photographs and then we'll be done all right cool thanks <laughs>